Well, hey guys, silly talk here. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. Um, I'm using uh, OBS now to record, right? Um, which is why we get these nice, like, one length videos instead of kind of like the choppy ones they were before. So I hope you guys do appreciate that. Um, but I was looking at the live thing instead of the recording thing, and I was like, oh god, it's not moving. And then I saw that it was, and I was like, oh, Tucker, you're, you're a fucking idiot. Um, but yeah. <laughs> This is uh, ECW, Extreme Championship Wrestling. This is, of course, Hardcore TV. This is episode 38, I think. Uh, we are on the heels of our... Uh, of our uh, television special, uh, Hostile City Showdown. Jesus, I couldn't think of what the hell it was called. I kept thinking Heat Wave for some reason. Hostile Heat Wave, I guess? I don't know, weird. Um, something that's going to be addressed in the show, but I might as well point it out now. The HWA were fucking losers, and Sabu's broken his leg in between episodes. He's gone for about six months. Yeah, it's, uh, it's fun times over here in Camp ECW. That doesn't throw a wrench in any plans or anything. Uh, and if you want to know who he got fucking injured to, there it is right there. Shark Boy. Fucking Shark Boy. Oh my god. Anyways, that's okay though. Whatever. I just. It infuriates me ever so slightly. Ever so slightly. But whatever, I guess. Um. Just means we won't have the guy who just won the feud. <laughs> Kinda sucks, but that's okay because we have a plan to address it. Uh, our main event tonight will see Jerry Lynn take on Just Incredible of Bam Bam's alliance with uh, Just Incredible and Mike Awesome. I don't know what the fuck to call them at all at this point. Um, I don't really know if they're like a proper thing. I mean, I guess they're a proper thing, but like they're not like a group with a name, you know what I mean? They don't like plan on sticking around after this feud, wink wink. Um, they're just kind of in it together to get the belt off Jerry. Because they hate Jerry. Um, because, I don't know, they're dudes playing on Bam Bam's emotions. Maybe Bam Bam paid them off. Um, who really knows what the relationship with those guys are, but Credible and Awesome are with Bam Bam, and they're after Jerry Lynn. So, uh, tonight, Lynn takes on Credible, and, uh, we'll see if there's any foul play afoot, if you know what I mean. Uh, we open up the show with Shane Douglas himself. He addresses Sabu's injury. He says, ladies and gentlemen, it is with a sad, sad heart that I, the franchise, hey, 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 god damn, that actually really hurt my throat, what the fuck, ow, have to announce that Sabu is injured. That's right, he broke his leg while facing me, the franchise, last week. Sabu, you may have won that battle, but it looks like I won the war, pal. Have fun on the shelf. But now, I'm done with Sabu. If you want to look at the, look at the, you know, matches, the results, you'd say Sabu won. But if you look at who's standing here tonight, we all know who the real winner is. <laughs> and then, uh, Bomb Track hits by Rage Against the Machine. That's Mikey Whipwreck. You know, Whipwreck's been kind of bouncing around ever since his, uh, IC title feud. Or, excuse me, IC title feud. Television title feud. Um, he comes out and he says, Douglas, Douglas, Shane, I'm... I'm starting to wonder when the hell you'll shut up. Okay, I thought Sabu beating you would shut you up, but to be honest, you're just getting on my nerves at this point, okay? You come out every single week and talk about how you're the best, you're the guy, you're the man. We don't need that here, okay? We've got our own problems in ECW. Have you not seen the fact that we have two guys running around this roster who want to replace all of us? Douglas says, replace all of us? No, 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 no. They want to replace the garbage worthless like yourself. They don't want to replace the franchise. <laughs> I have far too much worth to this company. What Breck says, 
You are so full of yourself, aren't you? You are so insanely full of yourself that you wouldn't even... That you won't even address the idea that your job may be on the line. Because you feel that you're too good to even be in that position. Isn't that right, Shane? Shane's like, yeah, that's that's, that's right, yeah. <laughs> and Whiprex is like, oh my fucking god. Okay, you know what, Shane? I, I've been talking about how I, I wanted somebody to shut you up. I thought Sabu would shut you up. Fine. I guess it falls to me. Okay? I, I, I'm tired of you running your mouth being the big shot, talking about how you're the franchise. Your last title run, you lost to Jerry Lynn, a guy who I don't think you thought had any chance at beating you, and that pisses Douglas off. Shane's like, you shut the fuck up, Mikey, okay? Jerry got lucky. Jerry couldn't hang with someone like me 99 days out of 100, but I guess every dog has its day, because Jerry Lynn is not a world champion. Not a world champion. Not somebody who could beat somebody of my caliber. Whipwreck's like, but he did. So what does that make you? The guy who couldn't beat the guy who wasn't fit to be world champion? And Douglas is like, he's starting to like look red almost with anger, you know what I mean? Like, Mikey's pushed his buttons to a proper, proper way. Douglas is like, Mikey? You son of a bitch. I've put up with your bullshit for so long. You're this goofy little jester motherfucker who's ridden on the back of the franchise. You've, li you've lived on the back of this company doing nothing, adding nothing. Never winning anything, just hanging around and being a body. And maybe it's time to finally bury your body. You want a chance to shut me up? I'll give it to you. You name the time and you name the place. And then we'll talk to Paul Heyman. And we'll get this done. So there you have it. Shane Douglas comes out, addresses the Sabu injury. Uh, and Mikey Whipwreck comes out and says he's tired of Douglas running his mouth. And Douglas says right back, I'm tired of you living off the franchise. Living off the fact that I made... But this company, I put it on the map. I made it what it is today, and you're living from that. So you shut the fuck up yourself. And now they're going to fight, because that's what we do in pro wrestling, if you didn't know. Uh, overall, pre pretty all right angle to open up. Uh, I thought it would have been a little bit better, but maybe Shane... Uh, can't really think. Maybe just Mikey's not really good on the mic at all. I don't know. Weird. We move into a 48D+. Plus. Um, excuse me. Goddamn. All right, cool. Uh, in a decent match, Guido defeated New Jack in 6-0-3 by submission with a, with a uh, Sicilian crab, um, which I like to think is just a Boston crab. Um, I think that would be it. Uh, New Jack improves a little bit. Uh, it's a brawling type match, um, and New Jack is completely out brawling Guido. You know what I mean? Just hammering away on him, uh, and then finally uh, Guido just kind of says nah, nah, fuck this, and just goes ham on New Jack, just starts going blow for blow with him, and starts to overpower New Jack, little Guido, you know, he was, he was talking about he found something in Rome, he definitely found something, he fights with a lot of heart tonight and gets the win, and uh, post-match, maybe he's feeling a little bit more with another 48D+, plus. Guido gets on the mic, and he says, Taz, you can run, and you can run, and you can run, but eventually your legs are going to get tired, and they're going to fall out. When are we doing this? When am I going to get to put your reign to the end that it properly deserves? The reign of Taz will come to an end at the hands of Italia's finest. The FBI's finest myself little guido little little guido it's so it's so hard to say that like even slightly intimidating little guido oh <laughs> um but yeah no overall um guido maybe maybe poking the bear a little bit you know he already had his match there was no need to piss taz off even more you know calls taz a coward 
Uh, backstage, we are in Paul Heyman's office with Dreamer, Sandman, Woman, Beulah. And so Dreamer's like, yeah, we got our ass handed to us the other week because they lost the Dudleys, if you remember. And Paul's like, yeah, you did. Um, maybe, maybe I was wrong, all right, to put you out of your element so early. You know what I mean? Maybe you needed some warm-up one-on-one, okay, first, right? And then maybe you could work together as a tag team once you get some momentum under you. So, um, s- woman, woman, yeah. Um, hmm, <laughs> who can I spare? Okay, okay. Uh, up next, uh, woman... Sandman is going to take on, uh, ah, oh, perfect, Draws. Woman's like, Draws is your fucking warm-up for the Sandman? Are you joking? Do you know who the Sandman is? And Paul Heyman's like, yeah, he's the guy who lost last week. And that, that kind of shuts Woman up. And he says, look, all right, I didn't mean to come off like that, all right? You two are, you two are very important to this current plan that I have, okay? You two are very big pieces. You're, in fact, one half of the entire plan, with Tommy being the other. So, just go out there, beat him, if you feel, if you can, alright? Sandman's kind of like, the fuck do you mean, if I can? And Heyman's like, you know, it's... We'll see. We'll see, okay? Just go out there, do your thing. And we move into that match. It's a 53C minus, and the Sandman defeats Dross in about 848 by pinfall with a flying leg drop. I'm trying to think, because there's a video I've seen definitely where Sandman does like a like. I don't know what the fuck to call it. He like flips and does a leg drop. Maybe that is the flying leg drop, where he just like flips and does a leg drop. It's like, imagine doing like a swanton, but like you like leg drop the dude, if that makes sense. Um. I think that might even be this move. But anyways, uh, Sandman completely out-hustles, out-muscles, out-cussles, out-tussles. Uh, draws, draws does his best, but really, Draws is not cut out for this shit. He's a jobber. He fucking sucks. We know this at this point. I'm out of kayfabe now. He's garbage. Um, and Sandman beats him. Easy as that. One, two, three. Uh, the Stormtroopers cut a promo on their loss to the Hardy Boys last week. Storm says, Jeff and Matt, you know, we're happy for you. We are. We're really quite happy that you two, you know, Cali- California? What? Carolina Backwater Dreamer Boys, whatever the fuck you want to call yourselves. We're, we're happy that you got the victory. You know what I mean? Because me and Chris, we're not out here to kill dreams. No, 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 no. So we're glad that you got the win. That way it's not that hard on you when we beat you 3-1. Listen, Jeff, Matt, and this is this is Candido talking now. He says, Jeff, Matt, you understand that you got lucky, right? You understand that what you did... Hardly ever happens again. Hardly will ever happen again. Ever. Ever. We're more experienced than you. We're bigger than you. We're badder than you. We're quicker than you. We're smarter than you. We have this gorgeous woman with Lance right here at ringside. And you two are just two losers, to put it bluntly. You throw yourselves and your lives away for a chance at glory and gold. We don't have to put our lives at risk in order to try to become tag team champions. Take that to bed tonight. Is that a catchphrase? That could be a catchphrase. That seems like a Sandman catchphrase, doesn't it? I don't know. Anyways, Jerry Lynn makes his way to the ring. Remember, he's taking on Just Incredible, uh, one part of the little alliance that one... One or one third, I guess, of the of the group uh, of people, <laughs> the group of people, um, the group of people trying to take him out. Bam, bam, just incredible. And Mike Awesome, he's taking on just incredible, the most uh, agile, I guess, of the of the three. 
and in a 67 C plus, very, very good. Wow. Jerry Lynn continues to be awesome. He beats Just Incredible in about 1542 by submission with a cross arm breaker. Um, it's a good, quick pace match. Um, a lot of really quick stuff. Uh, Credible pulls out um, that super kick that he does. Him and Lance kind of have the same kind of super kick type deal, where it's like it's kind of like the Rusev kick, but not really. It's like a pump to the super kick, if that makes any sense. Um, they like pump their leg a little bit. It's weird. I don't really know how to explain it, but I think I think if if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Okay, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, Lynn um, is composed though. Um, kind of kind of like a. I mean, shit, we've already had a Star Wars reference on here with the Stormtroopers. Might as well just go all in on it. Kind of like a kind of like a Star Wars, like, Jedi dynamic, where, like, Lin's very in control of his emotions, you know, and uses patience and stuff like that to take advantage. Well, Credible's just an all-out rage and fury. Uh, and Lin uh, is composed, and that allows him to see the holes in Credible's game, and he's able to pick away at the arm, um... You know, Credible tries for some kind of, like, crazy maneuver in the corner or something like that, but Lin gets out of the way, sees the hole, and works on the arm, uses that opportunity to work on the arm, uh, and locks in the cross arm breaker and makes Credible tap out. And is there going to be any foul play? Oh, jeez. Bam Bam Bigelow comes on to the stage, but he's got a mic. And he says, Jerry, Jerry, look at me, look at me. And Jerry turns around, and Jerry's holding his belt. He's just got his belt in the ring, and he looks at Bam Bam with his belt. And he just holds his belt up. Shows Bam Bam. Bam says, it's exactly what I wanted you to do. I wanted you to show these people that you turned on me. You doing that right there to rub it in my face. To rub in the face of the beast that you beat me. And Jerry, I'm not like somebody like Shane Douglas, where I can't admit when I was beaten. I was beaten. But now... Now I'm angry. You know, before I was driven. But now I'm pissed off. Jerry Lynn, when I get my hands on you in the future, you're going to wish that I had beaten you originally because you Jerry are the biggest traitor in this entire company you spit in my face you spit in the face of a friend you spit in the face of someone who gave a shit about you you spit in the face of the one person in this company who didn't think you were worthless And now you're nothing. And that belt's going to be around my waist. And Jerry just keeps the belt held up there and stares at Bam Bam. As Bam Bam says everything, Jerry raises the belt higher and higher and higher. And then as we get near the end of Bam Bam's promo, Jerry actually gets out of the ring, stands kind of like at the at the base of the ramp looking looking across at Bam Bam and he just holds the belt up and stares Bam Bam down sending the statement that maybe maybe Bam Bam's not wrong but Bam Bam attacked Jerry first so this really doesn't prove all that much but Jerry Lynn sends the statement I am the champion fuck you Fuck you if you don't believe in me. Fuck you if you think it was a fluke. Fuck you if you think that this would never happen. Fuck you if you think shit. I'm champion. That means I'm better. And Jerry Lynn may be the best worker in this company right now. Pound for pound. Hold for hold. He's world champion. And he's a damn fine world champion at that. Uh, 60 overall, it ups our pop, which is okay, um, yeah, that's, it's not a bad show by any means, uh, I was expecting to do a little bit better, kinda shocked that the Bam Bam angle at the end didn't do that well, but I guess because I rated Jerry on overness, it, it's really weird with ECW, because, like, 
the guys who I want to use. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'll explain it here while I load through this. It's like Shane should do a lot better in that opening segment, but he's held down by Mikey. But I need Mikey in there because Shane will rub off on him. Jerry Lynn is my world champion, and he's been billed throughout this entire save, I think, is one of the most competent wrestlers on the entire roster. Um, he's not somebody to be scoffed at, as I just established there with what I said at the end there. But, of course, that angle at the end is tanked because of his overness. It, it's hard sometimes, uh, but it's understandable, I guess. Um, Bam Bam Bigelow thinks that, hey, well, what, what do you know? What do you know? Some in kayfabe stuff where he thinks John Credible's turning into a good worker. That's awesome. Um... There's an interview with Doug Basham. I don't know the fuck to feel about that. Uh, we are still gaining money. We are up to about 18.6K. Soon to be 18.7K uh, this month alone. Uh, we're going to make a big payday this week. Week? Month. Uh, I, have, I have a good feeling about that. Next time I meet you guys, it will be the last episode for August 1998. Uh, we are getting closer, I believe, to House Party. It is one month's time. One month's time. Um, so yeah, um, I, I hope you all have enjoyed this episode. Um, I always enjoy making them. That's why I put them out now so regularly. Um, I'm back in that groove, you know what I mean? Um, I found with doing TW sometimes when you get out of your element, uh, it takes a little while to get back into it, but once you're in your element, you can bang things out, man, and it feels so good just to be able to put things down constantly, you know what I mean? And, uh... We're, we're nearing a thousand subs, which is, which, which is fucking mental, oh my god, like, I, I never expect to get a hundred subs, and now, like, we're pretty close to a thousand, I, I know we're not that close, we're, like, 80, maybe, away, but, um, shit, that's crazy, as somebody who never expected to get anywhere with this, <laughs> um, so I thank you all, as always.